I recently posted a video um, of a corner pour in which I used natural clay and woad as the colorants. Um, and I wanted them to be paler, more pastel than I've done in the past with clays. So I added some white kaolin clay to each of them. I wasn't really unhappy with that soap, but I thought the colors turned out kind of chalky. So I'm trying it again, doing a hurricane swirl this time, again, using uh, natural clays as well as woad, but I'm not going to be adding the white kaolin to any of those, except there's one that I'm making that will be white. And then also the, uh, the woad will have kaolin as its clay component. This is the recipe that I'm going to be using. Um, it should be reasonably slow. It is vegan, uh, using some castor oil for sudsiness, coconut oil for cleansing and hardness, uh, olive and high oleic sunflower oils to uh, uh, make the soap more conditioning and also slower to uh, harden. And uh, then palm oil, it is our SPO sustainable palm oil, again, just for some hardness. So that should make a, a nice recipe. Um, I am using some sugar and some sodium lactate as I usually do. And then for fragrance, a mixture of, of nature's gardens, eau de rose and fresh cut roses. Those are both definitely rose scented, but they're also quite different from each other. So I thought the mixture might be kind of like a bouquet of mixed rose varieties. And then on the bottom right there, you can see the colors I'm using. Um, for the darker clay soaps I've made in the past, I've tended to use about a teaspoon per uh, pitcher of colorant. So I've gone to about half that this time. French rose clay makes a nice medium pink. Mixing the French red and Brazilian gold clays gives a nice bright orange. The Brazilian gold itself is kind of a golden yellow. And then uh, the white kaolin would be kind of grayish white by itself. So I added some winter white mica to it to brighten it up. And then white kaolin with some woad powder uh, gives a nice shade of blue. I find woad is quite unpredictable from one batch to the next, you'll get a different shade. So I, I'm just kind of hoping for kind of a light sky blue here and we'll see what happens. And then French green clay, which doesn't give a lot of green color. I'm using a little more of it, three quarters of a teaspoon. And then also using some Celadon green mica from uh, uh, Nurture Soap uh, to try to turn it a little bit greener. These are the fragrance oils. Um, they're both quite good for use in cold process soap. They don't accelerate, they don't discolor, they don't separate, they don't rice. They tend to stick around and remain nicely fragrant for a good long time. I don't know that I've tried mixing them in the past, but I think I'm going to like that probably. My oils are at 96 degrees Fahrenheit. My lye water is at 116. I have already put the fragrance oil into the oils and I have sugar and sodium lactate in the lye water. And then I have all my colors here. I have moistened the clays with about 15 milliliters of water in each. I used a little bit of extra with the French green. And then for the blue, because there's woad there that doesn't mix with water, I used water to moisten the clay and then also a little bit of oil, about a tablespoon of oil to get the woad moistened. So I think I'm ready to mix this. As always, if this takes a long time, I will speed up or edit out parts of the video so you don't have to watch all the stirring. For a column pour, I'm hoping this will be a fairly slow moving so. That's nicely emulsified, so I'm going to distribute it to the colors. That is French rose, which will be pink. This is French red mixed with Brazilian gold to give a nice orange. This is Brazilian gold clay to give a kind of golden yellow. And then 
uh, French green clay with a little bit of Celadon green mica. And white kaolin mixed with some uh, winter white mica. And then white kaolin mixed with woad. Now I'll get the camera moved so you can have a better view of it as I pour. This soap is not really hardening up, but it, it uh, did get ready to pour very quickly after I turned the camera off. So I'm going to pour this in pretty much rainbow order, um, pink, orange, yellow, green, and then white before the blue so that the green and blue don't mix too much. I'm uh, for a Column pour, which is the way you start a hurricane swirl. I've got a bottle here with some water in it just so it doesn't float uh, that I'm going to pour over. This is a Brambleberry 18 bar mold with a silicone liner. I usually try for about six cycles when I'm doing a uh, column pour. This time I think I may make the stripes bigger and, and uh, might stop at four or five cycles. So there's one cycle. As I've said before, woad changes color as the soap cures, so that shade of blue is probably not what we're going to end up with, and I hope it'll look better than that when it's cured. That's two cycles. This is a light trace right now. Very nice for pouring. So this time I'm going to use all but a tiny amount but I'll leave, leave to fix the hole where the column comes out. So I don't want this column to drip on my soap. So I'm going to get the pitcher under it. Now, that center doesn't look bad, but I'm going to put the rest of the soap right in the center.
little bit of some other color I might put just a drop in the middle. It'll probably disappear when I swirl it, but we'll see what happens here. Put a little bit of yellow there. Okay, now with the uh, handle end, the thick end of a chopstick, I'm going to make uh, radial swipes. Maybe an inch to an inch and a half apart out here at the wall of the mold. And then, to do the hurricane swirl, I'll start right in the middle and make spirals. Probably three quarters of an inch apart. Again, that's a bit wider than I would normally do a hurricane swirl. But I think I want a little bigger, bolder stripes this time than I've done in the past. And that's that. Now I will put in the bar dividers and then spray it with alcohol. And because it's in a silicone line mold, I don't want to uh, oven process it at a full 170 Fahrenheit or 77 Celsius. Instead, I'll use about 55 Celsius. Uh, and that'll keep it from forming the little bubbles on the surface that often happens with a silicone mold when you heat it up. So here it is, freshly poured, still semi-liquid. I will put the wooden lid on this before I put it in the oven. The soap is about 24 hours old, so I'm going to unmold it now and we'll have a look at the individual bars. Here is the bottom side of the soap, just as it came out of the mold. Here are the bars just as they came out of the mold. I've not done any shaving or trimming or any sort of cleanup. I'll do that next. So those are tops. These are ends. The two on the left were where the bar dividers had punched through the batter. The one on the right then was against the uh, mold wall. And then here are some sides. Uh, same situation, the one on top was against the mold wall. The two bottom ones were um, sliced through by the uh, bar dividers and then these are bottom sides just as they came out of the mold. So I will uh, clean some of these up and we'll have a look at them after they've been trimmed. So I have done some shaving of the tops and trimming of the corners. Here's the top of one that has not been trimmed just for comparison and then these have been just a little bit of the top shaved off and uh, some trim. I'm really pleased with the way the colors turned out. That's exactly the color range I was looking for. By making the hurricane swirl stripes broader apart than I normally would, these don't have a strong look of the hurricane swirl, but I like the look. And then these are bottom sides. That one is not shaved at all and then just shaving a little bit, maybe a couple millimeters off of the bottom, brings out those colors to the bottom sides as well. So I'm really pleased with this soap. I'm glad it turned out just as it did.